Okay, so you've been a year into Toro. Yep, a year and what? A month now. 13 oh. months. Oh, wow, that's good time. So tell me how you got started and why you got started. Let's start there. Um, all right, so why I got started, obviously, uh, I have the entrepreneur mindset, so I'm always looking to get into things, but I specifically got into it because it was, I found out, I found out that Apple, um, was building a facility out here and Google as well. Um, so that's what made me, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, for those who don't know, but that's what made me get into it because when I found out all the money that was coming here. I decided, okay, I want a piece of that. And that's what made me get into it. Were there any challenges in the beginning? In the beginning? Um, yeah, there's always challenges because, one, you don't know how to list. You know, you, you're trying to figure out how to list it. I was buying cars, and I, I had a full-time job at the time. So when I was working the job, um, there was an issue where one of the – I was a logistics manager, so one of the um, dispatchers, she was out <clears> – <throat> So I had another guy filling in for her, but he was he was he wasn't the best at it. So he was constantly calling me while I was out getting cars and trying to list the cars and doing all the running around, um, getting doing deliveries to the airport, deliveries to people's homes. Um, so it was real challenging in the beginning, trying to figure all that out while still buying cars, while still being a manager while still being a single father, raising my two sons, so, yeah. So would you say that you've overcome those challenges and you kind of reached a stride? Yeah, now it's kind of, now, well, I don't have the job anymore, so that's that's good. So I'm able to, you know, devote my time to that. I'm not listing a bunch of new cars. I'm not buying a bunch of new cars. Now I'm only doing joint ventures. So with the joint ventures, I have, um, people who are looking to make extra income so they provide me with cars they put it under my fleet and that's how I make make money you know so for those who looking to get in you know hit me up <laughs> so how would somebody get into a joint venture with you if you don't want to go into the details of that you can I mean the best thing is reach out um, to me and then we can kind of discuss you know what are your plans um, as far as how much money you were looking to make each month um, what's your credit looking like if you're going to purchase a car, if your credit is not great, you're going to have higher interest rates, it's going to be harder for you to make that extra income. Um, seeing what your risk tolerance is, because that's it's still a risk no matter what, because there's other people driving your cars. So even though it's covered, it's still a risk, because if a car gets wrecked, you know, you have to deal with all of that. So, um, or just, even if it doesn't get wrecked fully, if it, if it gets in an accident, it's going to be sitting for a while. So, you know. People got to think about those things. A lot of times people want to join in, but they don't have the credit. Um, and then they're not thinking about all the extra things that could come with it, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. Because you always got to put money to the side just in case. Um, it's money to be made, but it's not one of those things where you just sit back and you're just going to be collecting, you know, thousands of dollars um, per month. It, it doesn't work that way. One thing I know now, um, that I didn't know before is that, you know, you don't have to deliver as, as much as you, you think. Um, I don't deliver to people as much anymore. I live right by the airport, so it kind of works out for me. Um, I wouldn't get into this business if I didn't live near the airport. That's that's first and foremost. Um, I'm sure you can still make money if you didn't live near the airport, but a lot of your clients are going to come from the airport. So I don't deliver anymore. Um, to the airport versus when I first started, I was delivering, and that's, that was the thing that was so time consuming, trying to make a delivery to the airport while someone else is picking up another car um, at your location, whether it's your home or if you have a, a space that you park your cars, you know, that could get hectic because somebody at the airport might say, hey, I'm coming in at 12 o'clock, and then you have a person that's uh, picking up at 1230, but then that person, the person that was on the plane, their, their plane is delayed and now they're coming in at 12.30 as well. And, you know, it's too much. And I'm not the one that's just going to, you know, put the key in the lockbox and just have you grab the key out of there. I, I like to be personable with the with the guests. So, and plus, if it come back damaged, 
you know that that whole process could be a pain in the ass if you don't you can go through toro but it's not as simple as people think so some damages you kind of want to just handle with the guests and if you don't establish that personal relationship that you know even though it's a business transaction they had just been like, oh, that wasn't me. And it, it makes it a lot harder versus when they kind of know your personality, they're more likely to want to get the thing fixed because they like you as a person. So, you know, you still have people just going to try to get out of it regardless. But I found that the more personable I am with them, when there is an issue, they're going to try to go out of their way to fix it. And plus, it's a deductible with Toro. So if the damages don't meet the deductible, um, then that's you got to pay that out of pocket. So that's another another thing that you definitely want to establish that relationship with the the guests so they can pay it. You know. So if I'm a person who's like a serial entrepreneur, what other businesses would you think would align best with Toro? Airbnb, <laughs> for sure, because these people that's coming in. You know, a lot of times they need a place to stay. Some want to stay at a hotel. Um, sometimes the hotels are booked. Um, some may come with a family, so they they rather be in a home with you know a kitchen, a full kitchen, and you know the bedrooms are separated and stuff like that. So Airbnb is is the way to go. That's that's what I'm getting into now. Um, but it's a little tough getting into Airbnb versus Toro. So it was a lot easier. It take it could take you like a, about an hour max um, to list the car, and it could go actually quicker than that. But with Airbnb, when you first start with it, it's a lot of questions that you got to answer. It's a lot of things you got to fill out, and um, yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of different pages. So, but that's the move now. It's the Airbnbs. So, what are some positive aspects of doing a joint venture? Um, for the person who's joining in, you don't really have to do anything. All you got to do is, um, make sure you pay your registration and taxes, pay that car note when I, when I send you that money. And, um, for the most part, I'm taking care of the rest. Um, unless it's something major that you have to take the car in for, but you know, I could take it to go get, get the maintenance and everything. So, um, as far as car being clean, everything that's all on me. So you're just sitting back kind of collecting money. You know, do you have any regrets so far? Yeah, yeah, I do. The one, uh, one of the regrets was I bought a, I bought a top trim Acura RDX, which in the Toro business, the the top trim cars, I wouldn't recommend. Um, if you could stay, I don't care what car you get, even if it's a, a high end luxury car, try to go with the base, you know, or close to base model. Because you're talking about um, from the, the, the lowest end to the top trim, especially with luxury, you can go fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. I mean, some car with a Porsche, you can go one hundred and thirty thousand from the base to the top trim. You know what I mean? You're not gonna make that money back. You know, ten thousand dollars if you got a car note, ten thousand dollar difference. That's about uh, two hundred dollars a month. So now you have to charge people more um, to make the, make up the difference. Most people, they don't know the difference between the highest trim and the lowest trim. Um, and when you're renting a car, they, they also want to they wanna save some money too. And Toro, the one thing about Toro, they charge trip fees. And those trip fees, even though I list the car at one, I, I could list the car for $100 a day. By the time you, the guest, rent it, let's just say if it's for one day you might end up paying two hundred dollars you know toro they be they going to eat sometimes they eat more off of my car than i do i'm like damn and, and they're going to take a piece of my my 100 you know what i mean so um if you get into this business you also want to start looking for your your strategy on how you can start doing more private rentals but that's what, a whole nother what's a private rental just um basically doing a rental outside of toro I wouldn't suggest if you if you already did the booking with them. I wouldn't suggest trying to you know say hey don't don't go through Toro, you know let's just do a private. I wouldn't suggest that. But when you 
Like I've had a couple repeat customers, you know, every time they go out of town, they want to rent a car um, or if their car is in the shop, whatever. So for some of those, I might be able to, you know, say, hey, you know, you was a good guest when you had my car. We could do some private rentals, but you could just, you know, turn into a private rental company overall where you wouldn't even need um, Toro. Or you could still use Toro because Toro has an option where if you have your, your commercial insurance and um, you decide you want to go, you know, more so on the um, private side, the split, they, they, they take barely, I think it's like 7%, where they have to just take 7%. And um, everything will be done. You will have to, you know, make sure they have the insurance and all of that extra stuff. Uh, the, the same way as a rental company uh, mm -hmm. when you go to Avis or whatever. So, yep. So, what's your next year going to look like? What are you thinking? My next year? So, I'm on a hunt right now to try to find a place um, where I can have all the cars parked. Because I'm going to be doing some joint ventures with people where we're going to join in and have workers. So, we don't have to do the the labor anymore you know to free up our time um, because I want to continue to build in different businesses and I can't do that if I'm paying too much attention to Toro because I'm 24 7 so you want to book a car at 3 in the morning I got you you know but I don't want to do that forever you know what I'm saying I don't have no, no social life doing that so so to wrap up what is one thing that you want people to know about your business with Toro um in the area, I'm probably the best. Not to even brag, but um, my reviews say it all. You know, out of how many trips I got, I think it's like 300. Yeah, about 300 in a year's time. And I don't have a bunch of low end cars that's just getting constantly booked, you know, over and over and over. Um, but 300 trips, I, cl I climbed up pretty fast. I started with, with nine cars, I got rid of one. And now I have 11. Um, but the customer service is great. I only had two two bad reviews, you know. And and that was really, to be honest, it was really on the customers. They just didn't clean the car. They, they brought it back filthy and, and got mad, you know, because I said something about it. When it was all part of the guidelines. But, you know, you can't please them all.